Hi again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm and today I want to answer a question I've been asked quite a bit recently which is what does a plant business even do during the winter? And of course it's a valid question. It's winter on my farm now. You might not be able to tell from the scene behind me because it's been a fairly mild start to the winter. Uh, but we have such a seasonal business growing and selling plants. Uh, there's a high demand early in the spring season, continuing on and peaking in spring. But when you get later into summer, sales slow down on most plants. You get into autumn, which is a great time to plant, but it really hasn't caught on with the buying public. And then you've got the whole season of winter where there's very, very little demand for most of your product. So what do you do with that? And this, obviously the industry has struggled with this for a long time and it's broken into sort of two camps. There's the camp that is along the lines of slow down, shut down, minimize expenses and prepare for the next season. And then there's the other camp, which is diversify your offerings and use your facilities to pivot into other adjacent businesses. And I've got to say a lot of businesses uh, either exemplify one end of the spectrum or the other and some of them try to do a little bit of both. So I want to use some examples from my own local market here to talk about how nursery businesses deal with the changing of the seasons and how they adapt to it. One good example of a business that's done exceptionally well with this is Minter Country Gardens, located in Chilliwack, not too far from here. Now, they have been a staple of their community for decades, but one thing they've done exceptionally well is they've tried to make their plant selection uh, relevant all the way through the year. So of course they have an assortment of shrubs and perennials and annuals that peak in the early spring, but they also have a big indoor garden department that includes uh, tropicals and house plants and succulents and things that would appeal to customers all the way through the year. Another thing that they've done is they've built adjacent businesses that, uh, that extend their season. Uh, things like their floristry department because you want to give flowers uh, many times of year, not just in the spring. Uh, they have a produce department. They also have a cafe. So uh, it's a wonderful environment and people come into the cafe all the way through the year. Their biggest pivot though is to go into Christmas. So if you hit their nursery in the Christmas time, they usually have a Christmas train set up. They have a light display, a drive-through light display. Uh, they sell, of course, the Christmas trees and ornaments and decor. So they've done an outstanding job of making their nursery relevant 52 weeks of year. And it, and it makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you've taken that time and effort and energy of trying to build a loyal customer base, you don't want to disappear on them for a few months of the year and then try to reacquire them and remind them the following season. If you can keep some amount of visitors flowing to your nursery or garden center or uh, connecting with your business throughout, it makes your job easier. Another local business that's done a similar thing, but just with the Halloween season, not the Christmas season, is Potter's. Now Potter's is another uh, chain uh, nursery and they have um, they have lots of hard goods so that helps to smooth out the curve for them because uh, hard goods in the in the plant business can be sold during the winter for Christmas and so on but then they do a Halloween uh, scary house that uh, draws attention during that time of year as well so it's a great way to extend the season is to move into seasonal products and the different uh, holiday events. So of course those examples were from retail, but if you're a plant grower like me, there's still things you can do to try to keep your sales a little more active during that later part of the season and going into the early part of the next spring. Uh, things that will extend your season late into the fall, things like echinaceas and fall mums. Uh, you can look at, uh, for starting early the next season, hellebores, which you would actually start the previous season because they're a long cycle crop, but you get most of your sales in hellebores in that February to March kind of range. Also uh, primulas and violas are cool season early starting plants that can extend you into that first early part of the season. Uh, you can certainly force bulbs, things like narcissus um, that make nice planters over the winter. Uh, you can push yourself into uh, evergreen boughs or into uh, colored foliage or colored stems. That's another way you can go. So things like dogwoods and, I and, and uh, hollies uh, that, uh, that you can use as cut stems over the winter. Uh, so 
there's lots of things you can do to try to keep yourself active during that season but I have to admit it's a bit of an uphill battle and in my case I've decided to take mostly the other approach and just focus on those things that I can do towards my business in the winter that will benefit me for the following season. So what are those other activities? Well I mean on roses I do a good pruning and remove the foliage from my plants so they don't harbor diseases for the following season but that applies of course to cleaning up all of your growing area cleaning your benches and getting them ready for the following season I do an installation of irrigation this time of year uh, usually I add uh, irrigation to one or two beds or to another greenhouse uh, as time allows uh, this is the time of year that I would go looking for seeds or if I'm buying in bare root roses this is the time of year that I would secure those numbers and get those orders in it's the time of year where you have some time to think about how are you going to tag your roses? What markets will you attend? How will you set up your online store? All of those marketing activities that you're actually far too busy to do uh, in the height of spring when you're also busy growing and taking care of plants. So it is kind of a nice breather and I can see why this approach has such an appeal for uh, nurserymen because they put in so much effort and so many hours during the peak part of the season and that's also an expensive time of year. This time of year can be when you lay back a little bit and reduce your expenses, you give people some time off if you have a staff and you can focus in a little bit more on the thinking and planning part of your business. Well, I guess in summary, you can either embrace or try to defy the seasonal nature of your, uh, of your plant business. And I'll give you an extreme example of a company that tried to defy it. Uh, this is from Edmonton, next province over, and Holes Garden Centre took on a big project where they became the whole Enjoy Centre. And they uh, combined their business with a grocery store, a spa, a conference centre, uh, hard goods stores of all sorts of different types almost became like a, a, a lifestyle mall of that area there to so try to extend their season to year round. I can't tell you how it did financially. I know they sold out to a real estate company some years back, uh, but it does sort of chafe me in so far as it takes you away from your roots as a plant business and by the time I visited it last time there it really didn't resemble that much of a plant business at all it was really more of a restaurant food service spa type business as far as as the feel of it was to me uh, so take that for what you want um, it, I'll, I'll leave that topic right there thank you so much for watching about what plant businesses should or, or can do over the winter if you have any questions or especially if you have any suggestions about what small plant businesses should do over the winter I would appreciate that in the comments of the video thanks so much